how to run. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest tonight is Simon Durkin of the Dashing Whippets. But Simon is more than just a good member of the Dashing Whippets. He's a goodwill ambassador to all runners. He also represents the New York Road Runners Youth Program. And we're going to learn all about those wonderful programs tonight. Let's get started, Simon, sure. by introducing yourself to our audience. Of course. Where were you born? A little bit about your family, something about your schooling. Okay, so I'm originally from London, England. Uh, I was born just outside of London and grew up there until I was maybe about 15, 16. I went to college and then as an adult, I lived in Manchester, England, which is where my father is from originally. And um, I was uh, not really your uh, ideal athlete at school, I guess. I, um, I, I remember distinctly one of the, I guess even an inspiration now for me is that I remember getting a report card when I was at high school and it said that um, uh, the three words were used on my report card, not very agile. And um, <laughs> that always sort of stuck with me. It's like, yeah, that's probably true at the time. And, uh, and so it's kind of surprising to me that I'm a runner now, actually, that looking back on that. Wow. And England. Did you do the typical things English boys do? I guess soccer is very big. Soccer and cricket, yeah, those were my two main sports. And I didn't even really play those like very, very seriously. I certainly played and, you know, soccer is a religion in England. You know, we play every day at lunchtime. Were you overweight? Was I was the... definitely overweight. Not, not hugely, but like, you know, I just, just wasn't a sportsman. I never, I, I enjoyed sports and I even enjoyed playing, but I just never really sort of committed myself to it. It never really felt like it was something that I belonged to. I think sports can be tribal for kids and mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't belong to the tribe. I was in the, the nerdy, uh, the, the math crew and not, not the, the sports crew. Interesting. Now, when you came to New York, what was the first running event that you participated that sort of um, opened your eyes? Yeah, I was here for a while and then I, I was working at um, a publishing company, John Wiley, and the team had entered, a, uh, the, sorry, the company had entered a team into the corporate challenge, the, the, the Chase corporate challenge. And uh, at the time, I was asked, you know, do you want to do this? And I, I was like, no. And I played on the company uh, softball team. So I had, like, some athletic friends and so forth. And they kind of egged me into doing this corporate challenge, on, literally on the day. And I went home and got, my like, my tennis shoes. And I went out, and I was amazed by how many people were there and this just this good vibe of this race. Wow, this is incredible. I've never really experienced it. Like participating in a sporting event like that, I've been at big sporting events, you know, um, soccer games and things like that, where you have that that kindred spirit and so forth, but not as a participant. And it really like opened my eyes, and I thought, like, you know, this running stuff, it's, you know, it's not so terrible. And I think before I'd always kind of not looked down on runners, but just like thought of it as just like not something that was me again, like this tribal instinct. Okay. That was the day I became a runner. Like to, I, that was the day I trans, I, I became part of the tribe. I wasn't really a serious runner after that. I would go out, you know, every now and again. In 2008, I was living in San Francisco for a while. We signed up for the half marathon there, like the first half of the marathon, which goes over the Golden Gate Bridge and into Golden Gate Park. Oh, and it was beautiful. Beautiful. And that was the first time I'd sort of set myself a, a training goal. And that was a different approach too, because now it's okay, you've got these 13 miles you need to run. Right, At the time, right. it was this huge accomplishment to just to be able to run for 13 miles. Um, particularly in San Francisco. Right. And I got my first medal and it just felt like this was something that I really wanted to, to keep doing and be a part of and to, to take more seriously and to, to really commit to. First taste of bling. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and that's very important to runners. And also started your collection of t-shirts. Right, right, of which I've probably got thousands now, but yeah. <laughs> when I came back to New York, New York Roadrunner need some help with web development. Um, they had some projects that they, you know, they, they needed some, some assistance with. Really, it's again, it's, it's a, a, a different tribe, I guess, really, the, uh, people that take running even more seriously. <laughs> and um, I just found a home there. Um, How long ago was that? That was uh, a little more than three years ago. Okay. And I've been wearing various different hats at New York Road Runners over the last three years, quite, quite a lot of them, quite honestly. <laughs> My current role is I'm a manager for youth events. So we, we put on a number of events through the year. Uh, I think it's around 75 events that we have during the year. 75 events. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And that's 75 major events. There may even be some that we're not counting in that, which are kind of like day-to-day -day events, but many more than anyone ever knows about. And That's right. I think everybody's heard of Team for Kids. Right. So Team for Kids is our charity team for adults. And right. that's part of the thing that everyone gets confused with. Well, the team is for kids. No, the, the team are all adults, but the, the cause that they're running for are the kids that are within the New York Roadrunners Youth Programming, where we train adults to run the race. Uh, many of them are first-timers uh, or people that you know are inexperienced, and they, they like right. working with a, with a team, and they get the training. Um, they get a lot of sort of experienced people helping them. 
Um, I've been lucky enough myself to be a part of that, and I've you know I've gone out and run with them as a mentor, and just right, spending right. time around other runners really helps a lot of first timers. You know, you've, I'm sure you've experienced that yourself. Where, in fact, my first experience was a team in training. Right, which exactly. Is, uh, it's a, it's a, 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 a similar parallel to team in training. And of course, so. uh, you fundraise in exchange for the terrific coaching, and you get right. the great Sid Howard. It's wonderful. We have the wonderful Sid Howard. I always think of him as the mayor of Fifth Avenue. He's he's a great character, Sid. I know he sat in this chair, and I've been lucky enough to benefit from their experience and their coaching and so those events that I was talking about that's uh, or a good chunk of it anyways is, is funded by Team for Kids. Let's talk about some of the sure, specific like youth events. Uh, I know I have had other guests here and, and one was very proud to have been a race buddy. Right, we love yeah. our race buddies, those are, those are great guys. You know, pacing is a huge issue with kids, like they, they go out and you know particularly for a long race like a four mile race, it's really hard when you're you know 13, 14 to know how to pace yourself and as an adult that's something that you can really help you know you can help motivate them and obviously it's just sort of from a safety perspective too it's an extra set of eyes that we have out there on the road looking after looking after right. the kids. I was surprised to learn with so many. Let's right. talk about uh, Mighty Milers. Mighty Milers is the biggest program that we offer. Uh, the last school year we had something like 80 uh, over 80,000 kids that were part of the Mighty Milers program. The aim of Mighty Milers is to get kids moving. It's mostly pre-teens. We do have some older kids um, particularly like special needs kids and things like well, that that's a better pro better fit for them because it's a, a little less structured than some of our other programs. Um, but the aim of it is that the kids are, are out there running or walking um, two to three times a week, um, a minimum of half a mile each time they, 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 they do a running session. Um, and as they go along, they're cumulatively working towards running a marathon of miles or multiple marathons of miles. Um, and as they reach certain milestones along the way, we send them uh, incentives, t-shirts, um, like um, pens and pencils, things for, for, for school, and ultimately medals. Like say so you're talking about bling, um, the kids get bling too. So we send out these great medals that they get to wear you know, around school and they have um, ceremonies in school assembly where they, they get handed their medals and this is just a really big thing for kids. Excellent. They really love it. And also they're probably they're tracking it or the teachers helping yeah, them the track teachers their are mileage. Helping tracking their mileage. They put up big charts at the back of the class where they color in how many miles they've done uh, either individually or collectively. So we have these, you know, it's just, it's great. It helps them with goal setting. It helps them with self-esteem. It helps them with their fitness. Um, a lot of the schools that we're working in, um, you know, they've had PE programs scrapped um, through, through funding cuts, oh, um, both in New York City and, and nationally. So My, Mighty Miners is actually a national program. So we have um, uh, maybe about two thirds of the kids are in the New York City area, but then there are, there are also sites um, in, I think as many as 48 states outside of New York City. We get so much good feedback from the the, the participants that are outside of, of New York City, it's great. I did not know that yeah. New York Roadrunners is not just New York. No, and this is it's, it's, nationwide. it's nationwide, and, it, and in, in a nice way, it, you know, there's lots of the things that happen in the youth programs that subtly reflect what we do as an organization. Because you know, the marathon is you know, it's a nationwide event. It's something that's on the calendar nationwide. You know, we've had teachers that have are doing Mighty Milers in Texas come and run the New York City Marathon as a way of you know being part of that that big family so there's a lot of right. sort of connections right. in uh, like that that's wonderful that's wonderful and I'd like to stress too it's a free program for most of the, the kids too so that's, okay, so that's the school has to apply the, the school has to apply okay, um, recruit it if they, you know. yeah and, they, and they, there are you know there's certain criteria that we want them to meet in terms of you know how often they're gonna they're gonna uh, practice how many kids are involved in the program. The it's goal is really to get the kids moving because uh, obesity, that's the bottom line. obesity is a huge food problem. Obviously. Choices among our kids, and is we're you know we're, we're looking we're looking to work with uh, Michelle Obama and her uh, Let's Move campaign and really just um, trying as much as possible to get the word out there that we give we have this free programming. What it really means is that we give guidance and we give assistance to the to the the teachers and the coaches that want to put on these programs. Right. Because what is, is most often the case is that we find that there's a school and there's no PE or there's little PE um, and what PE there is is not very well structured. And so what we can offer is structure and guidance and goals and all these things that then mean that that, that PE program really lasts and, it, and it's meaningful. Um, it, it just makes so much difference. You know, we have these great teachers that want to want to do something, but aren't perhaps trained as PE teachers. Right, right. They're science teachers and English teachers, but they're runners themselves or they're active people themselves. And they look around their schools and they see these like you know obese children that aren't aren't really getting enough exercise, that aren't concentrating in class, that are you know that are having behavioral issues. That actually the running and the PE really helps with it. Really helps okay. them to focus how, and to how be better. How can parents kids. get involved in this? Because well, it really comes to them. It does, and and actually. We have sites where you know the parents are involved. We recruit 
in such a fashion that we have one person that we consider the site coordinator and is the person that we're most connected to. But, but the sites that are most successful are the ones that then pull in other teachers and parents to come and help with the sessions and to, to, you know, to fundraise around, it, uh, around those things and, and find ways to be involved with their kids. Often the kids, surprisingly, this is the, the other beautiful thing that we find, is that you know, around New York City, we, we've, we've done some research on this and we find that it's great that what happens is the, the kids that do the Mighty Miners program at school and they go home and their parents that aren't really probably as active as they should be then start to become more active. Very nice ripple effect. And one of the big things that we're doing now, actually, at Rowan, is to try and complement that is we're going out into the community and we're working in communities like Harlem and the Bronx and trying to put on um, similar kinds of programs to Mighty Milers that are available through community centers for, you know, for adults and for seniors. Because, you know, seniors is a whole other world that, that has almost the same problem. You know, there's, there, there are a lot of seniors out there that spend the whole day watching TV. That's right, that's there's right. not really a, an op good option or a safe option for them right. to exercise. Well, so we're doing uh, some stuff Coach like that Lon too. Is Wilson involved? Because he, yeah, Lon, he does, Lon a lot does of some of that stuff, seniors. right. Sid, actually, you mentioned Sid Howard before, but Sid is, is actually working with us right now. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to say it one more time. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, I like that much better. The name is Sid Howard. I'm actually 73 years old, and I like to be known as Ambassador to Masters Track and Field. Today, we are at Tilden Senior Center. We are here every Wednesday to uh, have exercise as well as healthy living tips and walking to the seniors here. The senior community is not given a, a lot of attention. A lot of seniors just live for today. They have no idea that if they did any type of movement that it would benefit them. Even if they only move their bodies twice a week. And we also try to encourage them that if any type of exercise would definitely help with avoiding memory loss as well as Alzheimer's. We have over 30, sometimes 35 and 40 seniors that they are really excited with the program. They lost weight, they are more energized, and in fact, they have somewhere to come and not only eat, but to do exercise at the same time. And he's an inspiration. I mean, I think he's 73 now. All the things you mentioned about goal setting and, and getting the camaraderie, it reminded me of back of my feet. Because right. Because all those criteria not only pertains to indeed. kids, but Ann Malum took those same right. principles and started this wonderful organization, Back on My Feet, which you right. and yourself are involved. But I've certainly have, I've worked with them and we've supported them through through the Dashing Whippets. We've done some, some benefit for them. They have a partnership with New York Roadrunners. As you get on the path to self-sufficiency and you move well beyond homelessness, you're gonna have a big home in the New York City running community. I think people know enough about those wonderful connections that Roadrunner has with Back of My Feet, the kids, the community. Right. And, and apparently other cities come to New York and say, hey, teach us how to do the Mighty Mighty Indeed, program. a perfect example of that. We've just had a, um, a gentleman, a businessman that ran the New York City Marathon. Uh, I felt like that was kind of a, a life-changing event for him. He came over and he spoke to us about would it be possible for us to try and help him get some running programs started in, in India. And so we've worked together and they, they now have, I think it's five or six schools that are in this school year are gonna be doing a version of Mighty Mileage that suits their, their system. Welcome to the Running Posture segment of Form 101. Running posture is an important element of running form for two main reasons. Not only does good posture help runners move more efficiently, it can also promote a positive mental outlook while running. This segment focuses on three key elements of running posture for elementary school children. Then, for ways to teach your runners good posture, check out the activity segments featured in A Running Start. The first is running tall. This means keeping an upright body and keeping the head up so the chin is parallel to the ground. Here are some examples of not running tall. Hunching over leaning far forward,
and leaning back. Facing downward and looking up. Running tall keeps the body in alignment, which facilitates easier movement and easier breathing while promoting confidence. Help your runners understand the difference between running tall and not running tall, so they become aware of their bodies and begin to value the control they have over their posture. Running in general is that you don't need equipment. You know, so you know, we often think of, of, of sports in schools as being you know, football and baseball, which need you know, a, a, a good amount of equipment. Right. You know, we just need sneakers. We, if we can put kids in sneakers and we can find a space for them to run in, and you'd be surprised how creative our teachers are in terms of space too, because you would think, oh, well, you know, do all, the, all these schools have tracks? Because you know, in New York City, like, there are- They have schoolyards. You know, they have schoolyards, if they're lucky, some of them, are, you know, it's a roof space, or it's actually more creative than that. We have people that run in the cafeteria. We have people that mark out courses that are in the corridors of the schools. Mm -hmm. So Speaking spaces, of sneakers, I must admit, I heard about this to you last year. Right. You introduced or you made us aware of the sneaker program to the Whippets. Right. And I was so glad, I was so happy to see I, everybody I respond to your solicitation. Tell us about the sneaker drive. Sure. I, I mean, I couldn't be more proud of, 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 of the Dashing Whippets and our, our great team. Um, so we do a, every, every holiday season, we do a, a drive where we uh, collect new sneakers for some of the needier kids in our, in our programs. And uh, last year, um, I kind of sort of saw that there should be a marriage between my my wonderful club and my place of work, and that we could maybe raise some money to buy sneakers for these kids. And the, the Whippets responded wonderfully. I couldn't be prouder of them. I think we were able to buy it in somewhere in the region of like 55 pairs of new sneakers that all went to, to kids. Uh, some went to a, a, a school in Brooklyn, and others went out to Nevada, to one of our schools in, in one of the poor areas of Nevada. From the people in Nevada, we got back uh, a whole set of like thank you cards from the kids and like drawings of themselves running in their new sneakers. The coach that teaches the, uh, the school out in uh, Sunset Park, um, she's found me at like several different events to come and tell me how much of a difference the sneakers made. That the kids that got the sneakers were, were much more able to run, are faster, uh, but even perhaps more importantly, have stuck with the program. That small investment in them and the, and the, you know, the gift that we gave to them of wow. the sneakers has, has, has meant that, that compared to the year before where a lot of the kids fell away, as the year went on and just were less interested in the program, many more of those kids were, were felt that invested in the program and, and therefore went through and stayed recorded more miles and you know, all great. of the positive things that went along you with know, that. You know, we should also acknowledge the New York Flyers. We should, indeed. But when you brought the sneaker program, the Flyers also got involved. In fact, this, the Flyers, um, the, that was a separate connection. Um, so one of the Team for Kids um, coaches is a gentleman by the name of Glenn Wiener, who you may, may or may not know. Uh, he, I think he may have even have done it before me, and then we sort of separately came up with this idea. I, did, I promise you, Glenn, I didn't steal your idea. Um, so hip-hop is a steal. Please, steal it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm leading a little bit of, a, of an initiative now to reach out to more clubs. So if there are anybody out there right now that's from it one it of the other like, New York City like, clubs. It seems like a natural. It's, you it's, know, it's just how? such a great way to give back. You know, and, and, and my club, I know that you know, the Whippets were... You know, at first I was just sort of a little nervous because it's like, you know, I'm asking for money and I'm asking for help. And, you know, it's always just a little nerve wracking. And, and um, I couldn't have been more blown away by the response, you know, like so many people were like, yep, that sounds great, count me in. And then when I was able to provide, you know, feedback from the coaches, like everyone was just really delighted by how well it, it, um, how well it was received and how important those sneakers ended up being. Right now it's a holiday thing, but we're hopeful that, you know, as I said before, we have, um, I think in total last year, we had like 115,000 kids that were in some way part of our programs. Um, so we had the Mining Milers program, we have Young Runners, which is more of kind of a track and field. Um, we have these wonderful events called Jamborees, which are um, held at the Armory and Icon Stadium. And we have as many as 3,000 kids come to those. Wait a minute, the Armory, the one, the New Balance Armory? The New Balance Armory. So if you're, you're a kid, imagine how great this is. You're, you're an eight-year-old kid, you know, and, and uh, you know, the Milrose Games just happened in February. You know, they got to see some of these world-class athletes. And then a few weeks later, here you are, you're that same, you know, same eight-year-old kid, and you're on the starting line on the same 55-meter track. But it's, you know, it's this awesome. is just no ordinary track. Oh it's no, rated the Armory the is the fastest track in the world. It, it's special. I go to the Armory so often with these events, and we're lucky that we, we you know, we have another great relationship with the people at the Armory, and those, they're really great people there. We have you know, a number of our kids' programs there, are City Sports for Kids. Which those are the coach by the, the Clovers. The right? Clovers, exactly. And Bob and Shelley have been doing that for like 20 years, something like that crazy. It's, like, it's a great, great program. We just had our last one of the spring, uh, spring events 
this past Sunday. That's a program where we have like 300 kids that come in and learn on, on a Sunday afternoon um, track and field. We do sprinting and long distance running and we throw javelins. Can you believe we throw javelins? We have these like plastic, uh, they're called turbo javelins. Oh, good thing it's plastic. I yeah, <laughs> actually, I have it with kids. <laughs> the, the kids love it and it's just it's just a great program. But yeah, getting back to the army, like we, so we go up there all the time and I, I'm there so often and you walk through the door and there's this magic, like you can't describe it. Like oh, it's, I, I've been there once, it is magic. You walk through the glass doors onto the track and you know, particularly when you get onto the Mondo surface, onto the track itself, like it just has this amazing presence. It's like being in a, a cathedral or like, like it has that same presence. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. It's really and anybody at every, of any age would have would feel that, what you felt. I, I, I hope felt. so. I know, I, and I, I know the kids do it. And that's, I mean, it's, that, that's why I do what I do, honestly. I, oh, I'm so please. lucky that I get these opportunities where, um, you know, even on the craziest days, I mean, we, we've had 3,000 kids in the armory for, for one of these jamborees, which is a lot of kids and parents and coaches. And, you know, I'd be a liar to say that it's not crazy. It's crazy. But in a great way, it's crazy. Right, I mean, it's yes. busy and it's, you know, there's just an electricity you can't describe. And and then amongst all of the craziness when you're trying to, you know, pulling your hair out, organizing and getting all the kids ready for every event. And, you know, the gun is going like every minute, like there's another race, another 55 minutes, <laughs> bang, I'm over there. And there's, there's a moment in there where, you know, you, know, you just see a, a kid smile, you see a kid that... Um, wouldn't normally have had this experience that we've been able to bring to them. Yeah, and you get that little, yeah. that, that moment yeah, and you have yeah. to, capture those moments because it, it's there, the reward is there, it's, it's beautiful, I, I love it. I remember when I first stepped on the Armory track, I thought I was running on clouds. Right. Uh, it was just a different experience. It's, it's great, you, it really is great. You felt, even when walking, you felt like you were flying. Right, right. <laughs> Never mind running I, it. I completely it hear you, it's great. Indeed. But let's talk about the dashing whippets. Sure, I'm sorry. That's your team of choice. It is. How did you find them, how did you pick them? Um, so there's an event every year called National Running Day, which is, sponsored by New York Roadrunners and we had an event um, 2011 uh, it was called the Singlets Mixer um, which I have to give a shout out to my wonderful girlfriend Jennifer this was her doing she sort of she created this event where um, clubs could come along and it was a fun run I think it was like a two or three mile fun run and we asked clubs from all, of, all over the, the, um, the city to come and represent, bring us three or four members, wear your, wear your jerseys, like kind of like a race, but sometimes on a race day, you know, you see all these clubs going by, but it's kind of hard to know, you know, what are those guys about, you know, is that a club I want to be with? And the whole point of this was for people actually just like myself that hadn't chosen a club, but wanted to be a part of the club system, because it makes such a difference being in, in a club. Like the Whippets have, have really helped me as a runner like in ways that you know you really can't describe and you know just being a part of a team in terms of training um you know friendships and camaraderie but also just just making you more sort of serious and competitive like having that that the team behind you also sort of challenging you you know like i, I go around and you know i have people that i can compare myself to both in training but also in races mm -hmm. you know to pull me along and to push me even harder you know right, there, right. there are certain like a subset of people that, that yeah. I work that I run with that, that I like that, that I want to beat that guy you know like, <laughs> but in a good way you know like so, in a, so you're also competitive yeah now. I am and I, I probably wasn't you know but, uh, but unless you said so. you described a tribal so you, you're a happy member of the tribe uh, the runners community uh, very much so I, I, you know I think we're, we're, we're spoiled I mean your show is a, is a perfect example of all of the different people that are part of our running community and you know New York is the is the the mixing part of the world, it's the crossroads of the world. I'm British, the Whippets is full of the United Nations. I mean, it's like, like quite literally, we have like, you know, one of every creed and color, like, like we have, you know, we have Kenyans and we have Ethiopians and we have, um, you know, Russians and you know, you name it, we have it, Brazilians, have it. it's like, it's I, great I, I, and I, I, I really know. love that. Is it amazing really growth it. with it? Three years. I think you have over 400 members. We do. And some of them uh, even come from as far away as France and Spain. Right. right. We have Xavi this. that comes from Boston, and he, he's like uh, he, he's a, a, a postgrad or a graduate student, and so he's been spending some time at um, the universities here in, in New York. And like he'll come for like three months, and while he's here, he's a whippet. We have a guy from Finland, Yerke, who's like one of our you know it's like a cult hero at the, the whippets. I, you know, I, he's a great I know, runner, I know. and he's here. Um, it's it's great. He's almost like a an ambassador or something like that for the Whippets. It's great. I'm totally impressed with the Whippets. Uh, one of the reasons is more than just a few people stand up and, and get things done. It looks like on any given day, there's a dozen Whippets doing different things. Completely. From right. setting a, a clinic to you're doing the youth program. I couldn't agree more. As 
somebody's doing a, a charity with Michael J. Fox in Jersey. Right. It's like on and on and on. And it's both men and women. It's mostly a young club. Mostly, yeah. And we have, we have to give a special shout out to, to your, your photography team. Ben, Ben and CD. Uh, These guys are out there in all weathers. Like, I, I can't love them enough. Like, um, they, they take time out of their own racing schedules to instead of, of racing they take photos and we get these like a, like an amazing package of photos and the quality only gets better like i think ben has really been seriously into photography for about two years and so he, like i think he's using it as a you know sort of a learning project as well but it, like the, the photos that we've have are just like every time are, are amazing i always say to ben that he should take royalties from the number of people that use his photos uh, and at CD2 uh, for um, their profile pictures on on Facebook because we all have these wonderful <laughs> we have these wonderful pictures of us in, f in full flight coming down Fifth Avenue or whatever oh I, I love the one it's, where uh, yeah. you guys were cresting he actually like specs out the, the locations like he'll go to a race course the week before and and see where the best spots are and he's an amazing a photographer yeah, his dedication uh, is great and the nice thing about it, he also looks for other team shots. Oh, right, right, right. So the front runners and all these other guys that we're friendly with. And, and that's, I mean, that kind of brings us back nicely to what you were saying before in the sense that, like, the, the New York running community is great. I mean, what, what Roadrunners does is provide these events and so forth that, that we have the opportunity to race. But the clubs then do something wholly on top of that, which is this whole other layer of, of community and, you know, family really, for, I think, is the best way of describing it. You know, we go out there every week, and when we see people that we know from the, for whether they're on Van Cortland or whether they're on, you know, the front runners or North Brooklyn runners or the flyers, you know, everybody's cheering for each other. And, you know, I wouldn't be a part of the running community, or certainly not as dedicated a member of the, the running community, if it wasn't for that support. The Fifth Avenue Mile, I, I put my Facebook status afterwards that I felt like the mayor because when I was running down, down there, that's 20 blocks, right? I could, I could literally hear, and I was so focused on my running. I was like on every single block. There was somebody that I knew from, you know, from road runners, from the whippets, from, from one of the, the myriad clubs, and it just felt amazing. Like I, I can't tell you how much, you know, pride I took in hearing that and feeling that that love. It's just great, and it's, it's a big part of running. Listen, on that note, we have to close it out. Thank you. I wish you great success with all these youth programs. Thank you, Will. And in your own personal running. I appreciate it. And many, many happy years of running with the Dashing Whippets and beyond. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Will. Take care.